USA, USA. Oh, what a night for our nation. She believes glory again. We are almost too she believey. Oh, the US women. Smells like seems to be Lynn Williams. How are you feeling? Have you got a have you got a nasty case of she believes? <laughs> I'm feeling good. I mean Alyssa Nair, PKs. I wish we didn't have to go to PKs, but it, every time we go, it's like a listener is, it's like art. So I don't even know. I like love watching her do her art, but I don't want us to do that anymore. It is. I starting to think sneaky and I love your thing. A listener penalties is art. I mean, it is. It's Michelangelo sculpting. It's like Picasso. Um, Put her in the Louvre. Yeah, hang. A listener in the Louvre. It is art. <laughs> it's art meets science. I'm starting to think she prefers penalties to the normal games. I know. It's it's so bizarre. <laughs> I was just telling Marley, my fiance, that she, it looks you can tell she goes into this zone, like her face, her eyes. Um, I think you you can get a glimpse when she puts the ball down to even take her own penalty. And you're like, you're in a different world than the rest of us are in right now. It's incredible. I know, but by the way, that different world is her world and we all just live in it. <laughs> um, I am so excited to debrief with you on it. I actually, I mean, we know a listener. Um, mm -hmm. She's very arrogant. She's very egotistical. <laughs> she loves the spotlight. She's I the think worst. That, yeah, the worst. <laughs> That's why she drives. I mean, what a narcissist. That's why she drives <laughs> in these moments. But we're going to get there. We are kind of jumping ahead to the end. If you've not watched and you're just tuning in, the United States have just won the 2024 She Believes Trophy. They drew 2-2 against a quite feisty Canada um, mm -hmm. and then outlasted them on penalties. Of course they did, 5-4, another Alyssa Nair masterclass. Alyssa Nair, penalties is art, says Lynn Williams. Honestly, she's more like a she's like a badass penalty-taking, penalty-saving version of, of Shohei Otani. Uh, scoring, saving, yeah. scoring, saving. Does it We're all. Yeah, she does it all. I mean, just <laughs> let her take them all. Let her play up top at that hybrid number one, number 10 that the nation's holding out for. Um, I will introduce you formally now. It is a joy to welcome from Gotham, the US Women's National Team and Good Vibes FC. It is so lovely to be here with the magical Absolutely. Lynn Williams. Thank you so much for having me. I couldn't think of a better way to spend my, I don't even know what day it is, Monday, Monday night. I think you probably could, Lynn, than hanging out with me. <laughs> it's worse than being injured is hanging out with me. But we do need to acknowledge Good Vibes FC viewers. Sam Ewish could not be here tonight. We're really all living in her world. We send her our love. Yes. Um, but this is a dream come true for me. It's like a renegade version, a counterfeit version of Snacks. It's Knacks. It's what I've always Knacks. wanted to do with you. Lynn. Everybody Knacks. tune into Knacks. Yes, it's a knockoff. <laughs> it's the knockoff Snacks. And we're going to do it with you, dear viewers. Uh, we're going to break the game down in a moment. Uh, but you, dear listeners, you Good Vibe FCers can join the conversation. Scan the QR code in the top left of your screen or click the pinned comment in the chat if you're allergic to QR codes like I am. I'll take you to a Zoom with our producer, the mighty J-Dubs tonight, who can tell you everything you need to know once you get there. Come and talk to us. Come and speak to Lynn. Ask her about anything that has occurred tonight. We can talk about life. We can talk about NAX, the new <laughs> knockoff podcast that's sweeping America. And if you don't want to ask a question, just give us a like. But get stuck in, in the chat. We'll read your best comments out. Lynn, are you ready to dive in? Uh, let's do it. I've been ready. All game. God, let us get in. Um, tonight in Columbus, the town that Frankie Hedgeup built, facing Canada, the starting lineup. Uh, for Twyla Kilgore's last dance, as it will forever be known, a fascinating flip-flop from the semi-final. Uh, interesting mm -hmm. tactical decision from Twyla slash Emma. Uh, Mal Swanson, sensational at the weekend, started on the bench with Trinity Rodman. Sophia Smith in, Crystal Dunn in for Night Swanger, and Sonic given the start alongside the quite imperious coffee. Changing <laughs> formation. Four four three uh, four three three. What did you make of the starting lineup? Was this was this about Canada, Lynn, and their tactics, their plan, or what we thought it would be, or was it more fine tuning for the Olympics, trying something new and thinking about that? I think it was a little bit of both. Um, I think when any time you have a trophy on the line, you're gonna try to put the best lineup you think that matches that said team that you're playing. Um, but I also think that 
with the Olympics coming, um, and that's the the major tournament that we're obviously preparing for this year, you, you have to see connections. You have to see maybe some people you haven't seen at, as much. Um, so I think it was a, probably a mixture of both. It was a relief, I've got to say, to see Naomi Gurma on the bench despite mm -hmm. that knock against Japan. Um, and the last time these two teams met, 35 days ago, it was the Water World Classico <laughs> in the Gold Cup. 2-2, the US won on penalties. That's called foreshadowing. Um, this game, oddly, they decided to play it under clear skies. Full hearts, I can't know. lose. Felt odd watching them play on dry land. Lately. Yeah, why would they do that? I don't know. I don't, they don't know how to play football anymore. <laughs> I'm old enough to remember when we really played. Yeah, it's it's so funny that it was almost the exact same um, score. Is about it's almost identical, besides being dry. Um, <laughs> and um, I was actually happy to see that we were going to play Canada this time. Um, I felt like because the field was so terrible last time we played, we didn't get a full true um matchup against them and i think that we need to face a canada uh, going into the olympics and seeing the different tactics and what we can work on what's working well etc and last time we didn't we just didn't get to do it early exchanges we didn't concede after 30 seconds so take that one off for <laughs> progress what did you see you like the tempo setting at the outset of the sonnet coffee double pivot. Yeah. They're at Tina Fey, Amy Polar levels of chemistry in the midfield. What did you love? Yeah, well, I loved seeing Sonnet back in the midfield. Um, I think she brings a calmness, a direction to the midfield as well. Um, with the double sixes, we've seen this um, a couple of times, obviously, since the World Cup. Um, and I thought the balance between when one would need to go forward and be able to get into the box more, the other one was naturally able to hold and um, re rest defense for lack of better words um and then vice versa almost like a pendulum um going back and forth so i thought that that was really cool to watch them do this was the first time that back four had played together i mean yeah. i think it was the first time the front three alex morgan uh Shaw, sophia smith uh had played together some in unfamiliar positions mm -hmm. and you've been part of experimental front threes for this team. Can you describe what it feels like wanting to impress and make your case uh, as an individual, even as you're feeling your way collectively? Yeah, you want to leave a mark, you know, as as the, the time dwindles on, you know, this is your last camp with um, Twyla as the head coach. You know, Emma's coming in. You want to leave lasting impressions. Um, but at the same time, you have to build chemistry with players around you. So I think it takes a second to, to say, okay, well, she wants the ball here. I'm usually used to playing. I think of, um, Emily Fox and Trin on the, on that right side, they have played a lot of games together. So I think that they have built a, a connection in where does Trinity like the ball? How does Emily Fox like the ball? What space are you naturally going to be occupying? And so watching them figure that out in real time, um, I think it, it's really neat to see um and i thought that that's what we saw we, but we saw it all over the pitch with the back line the midfield and the front three as well and so i would say the first maybe 15 20 minutes it looked like everybody was just trying to feel each other out but you were struck in that time how much of that us play was coming down the right yeah i thought a lot of the play was coming down the right um it looked like we were playing in a like a lopsided formation um crystal was getting really high um I felt like we needed a little bit more width on the right side and and being patient in that formation, but it looked like a lot of the play was coming down the right. And so um, I think the challenge is to see how can we make it a little bit more balanced of if they're going to take off the take out the right side, how do we get it to the left? If they're going to stop the left side, how do we hurt them on the right and just be a little bit unpredictable in that way? Canada content almost to soak up the pressure, mm -hmm. coil to pounce on any U.S. mistake. Um, when we were trying to pass the ball out the back, they were not afraid to be physical. There was a no. Jesse Fleming flying into the side of Lindsay <laughs> Haran, Kung Fu fighting style. Um, and then 29 minute, the first clear cut chance fell to the United States. Alex Morgan flicked on a header. Um, and then, oh my Lord, Jaden Shaw, a stunning oh flick over the defender, Gilles. Um, it was Messi esque, finishing low. Yeah. Kelly Shelton, though, uh, came out to smother, held on. Um, and that would be the only U.S. shot on target in that first off. Can we talk about Jaden Shaw? She is yeah. so skilled, so clinical, but above all, 
you know, 19 years of age, 18 years of age, seemingly so confident, um, steely confident um, in her intent. Tell us what she's like. I think she's 19, but that doesn't take away anything. She could be 10 oh, for all I know. It. She's she's yeah, so, okay. that, that's different. yeah, different. she's 19. So, oh no, um, um, <laughs> as a person, she's just confident. She's got a little swagger about herself. Um, she is fun to be around. She knows she's 19. I, I don't want to age myself, but I'm 30. So some, sometimes I'm like, Jaden, I don't know what you're talking about, but I love you. Um, and so to see that like translate onto the field, she's very creative, um, a creative player. She sees space very well. And I think that one thing that I love about her is that she isn't afraid to try things and she, she looks like she's just having fun. Um, I think sometimes, and I've experienced this in my career as well as like, you want something so bad, you're afraid to mess up. Um, and she, she doesn't seem to have that at all, which I think is so beautiful. Um, just playing with freedom, playing with just the ability to try anything, to try to flick it over the defender and, and take a shot. I think that that takes just the confidence and, um, not, it, not in, in playing confidence, but just confidence in yourself to execute it. I, I love that. Um, what you've just said, like who can't relate to what you just said in life. There's those of us who are, you know, blocked by our own, a mm -hmm. sense of doubt and to watch her it is to see someone play without inhibitions and it is magnificent yeah. long may that continue but the back half of the first 45 honestly a scrappy stop start game which canada were probably delighted with probably gilles dumping the ball into chelsea's ashley lawrence charged into the box with the heat of a thousand suns panic set in oh a listen there charged yeah. out to clear um the ball took out lawrence leicester city's deanne rose delicately fed the ball to Leon, who lashed it home. I've got to say it was gobsmacking as a US fan in that moment, yeah. but you were struck by that difficult decision there had between exposing the goal and attempting to clear a line. Yeah, I think that we can talk about like how the ball got there and all all the Alyssa's decision to come out. Like we can talk about all that, but I think it's it's so interesting as a def I'm not a defender and I know it's very difficult back there. I think also um, as a forward, we can mess up a million times. You mess up as a defender one time and, and it's costly. Um, so I do not envy them at all, but I thought it was interesting in the decision to you're told once the keeper comes out to protect the goal, which great decision, protect the goal. You maybe can get a block on, but then it leaves, uh, Adriana Leon just open in the middle of the box. And so I, again, not a defender. <laughs> and it's a split says a split second decision, but uh, w which both Fox and Abby dropped. Can one of them step to her? Um, is that the right decision? I don't know. Food for thought. Again, not a defender. I, I think a listener was like, "How can I make this about me at the end of the game? We need to concede yeah. here." We Again, concede. Yes. super super conceded. So. Next level, super <laughs> conceded. Next <laughs> so. level thinking. Now that uh, I retrospectively realized why this goal occurred, but it was a shock. In the moment, by way of context, mm -hmm. against Canada, United States have an all-time series record. It's quite amazing. I was shocked when I saw this. 53 US wins, 8 draws, and just 4 Canada wins. And in these moments, you kind of want to see how the United States respond. Chances quickly created mm -hmm. for Alex Morgan. Blocked. Jaden Shaw drove over. You've been in the locker room at halftime when the United States is down. Can you describe what happens? Who does the talking? how much even needs to be said? Yeah, I think uh, a lot of people do the talking. So you first go in and you are able to talk as a team. Um, usually there's some talking as you're going into the locker room of little chatters of what they see on the field. Can you, can you pull somebody um, going into your, going into the locker room? And then when you're there, you talk as a team. So um, depending on how it's going, it, it, you can either be more calm or more um, aggressive. And I'm like going to just assume that there was more of an aggressive um, tone to it. But at the same time, I think what this U.S. team has shown, especially in the recent past, is it's okay. We're going to be fine. We have 45 more minutes to play. Um, after that, the coach will come in and talk. And I could just from how they came out, my assumption is she talked about tempo and the ability to, we need to press and we need to get the ball moving a little bit more. Again, I wasn't there, but that was, that is just going to be my assumption.
Yeah, and the last word went to the listener saying, just get me one. I don't want to win. I don't want to lose. I just need that draw. Halftime change, big one. Coffee off. Mallory Swanson on. Uh, mm-hmm. Building on their 78 minutes in the first game. Haran dropping back deeper. US essentially giving up the double pivot. Trying to overload, overpower Canada. Hem them in. And well, it worked. Uh, it worked. Fine collective interplay from Davidson uh, to Shaw. She fed Smith, uh, who had some thorn-on-thorn violence, skinning Jesse Fleming, <laughs> and then driving the ball home. Her face in the celebrations was was sheer joy mixed with relief. I felt every emotion for her, Lynn Williams. Yeah. Yeah, I think that Soph in the first half, she looked a little bit timid. Um, and it's not a Soph that we normally see. And just taking more touches than we normally see her take. And I think that um, I'm really happy that she was able to come back on, regroup at halftime. And and it just looked like she was is trusting her in ability. And in that shot, she got it out of her feet. And, and it didn't need to be the most perfect shot ever. It was the most perfect shot but it didn't need to be. And um, I think that that's when Soph is at her best, when she's catching keepers off guard because she has such a quick release um, and her just vision to to take chances. I think that that is part of being an amazing goal scorer is just the ability and the willingness to take a chance. Um, and so I'm so happy for her. I, I think that um, her ability to come back and just score a goal, but not only one goal, two goals. I'm really, really happy for her. I mean, the U.S. had second time this tournament come back from a goal down and they kept coming. Mm -hmm. Uh, Swanson feeding Sophia on a one-on-one. She just ran out of gas, but she quickly refueled. Trinity Rodman (laughs) making her impact felt within minutes of coming onto the field, feeding a speeding Sophia Smith, alliteration lovers, and she made no mistake second time round. Lynn, I was just like, oh, my God, this team is so tenacious. This is the second time we've gone behind, second time we've gone ahead. They should change the name of this tournament to Sophia Smith Believes. <laughs> um, yeah, I agree. I think that we we keep seeing um, the the tenaciousness of the team, the the willingness to win, the the want to win. But I think that maybe we should just regroup, have a second of like, why, why do we have to go down a goal <laughs> first? I feel like we're, we're just so, we were like, yeah, we got to show how tough we are. We got to dig ourselves a hole first. And um, we even, I even would go back to Gold Cup in Mexico. I think that that was like a punch in the face of we got to get going. And then the rest of the tournament was amazing. Um and so I, I think that that's something we need to look at, definitely. Um, but I think it's really exciting and, and confidence building, knowing that if we are down, we have the grit and the the fight to crawl out of that and get some goals back. God, I, I mean, it is fascinating. I mean, there are teams that do need to feel the taste of their own blood in their <laughs> mouth before they step up and start smiting. Producer J-Dubs texted me and wrote Trinity Rodman to Sophia Smith. How many times will we hear that? in the years to come. Um, And respect to Twyla, in that moment, her last game, it was her changes that had made all the difference. Mal Swanson and Trinity Rodman really changing the energy and the scoreline within seconds of stepping onto this field. Jaden Shaw subbed out on 75 minutes, ending her superlative record. Not normal this, incredible. We've kind of normalized. Yeah. I mean, how dare she lose (laughs) this? Scoring scoring five straight starts. Uh, The United States brought on Corbin Albert for the second straight game, uh, clearly signaling uh, that they intend for her to be part of the program um, in the in the medium term audible boos from the crowd, uh, a complicated dance. Um, I'd say if this is the case, I do hope that this month is one that she looks back on in life as a true uh, learning moment uh, for real change. Uh, but we didn't have a second to dwell on it because within moments, an innocuous ball into the box. Dunn went to shut down Leon. Um, I think in, in the Premier League, you call it a coming together. I mean, but it was a coming together. If they came together, it was grazing molecules. Lynn, was this yeah. the conquer caffiest of penalties? This was soft. Yeah, I haven't seen a soft penalty like that in a while. Um I feel I just feel for Crystal. I feel for the whole situation a, a very very light graze of a player gets called as a PK and then and then after the PK she gets taken out. So the whole situation I think is oh, is just 
Yes. I, I just feel like that's so unfair. Um, I just don't think it was a PK. I don't, I might be biased, but I don't think it's a PK. At the end of the day, um, Chris Hilton paid a price. She was just a pawn in a listener's complex game. We all... I know. I know. She's like, she's living in your 20... 20- 75 and we're just in 2024 like i don't know what Alyssa's is doing I'm in, I'm in about 12 i'm in about 1987 i've got to be candid but you're right i love that i want to get a t-shirt that says that Alyssa there is living in 2075 she is she's she's she drives a flying car to training no one that's yeah we don't that. know but respect to leon finish with real technique pass the listen there she eats nails for breakfast, trademark, and is in the Gold Cup semi-final. Late Canadian penalty tied it up at 2-2. Smith 2, Leon 2. Canada, not done. History will forget. Buchanan almost broke the goal frame with a smashing header. Thunderous yeah. off the bar. Um, the momentum totally changed down the back of 10 minutes of that game. Um, we were trying to work out what happened, Lynn. I don't know what you, if you ever came to a, a crystallized thought. I didn't. I have not come to a crystallized thought. I think that sometimes in games, just momentum's just shift um, for whatever reason. I, I do think that we weren't getting as much pressure on their back line for whatever reason. Um, I was trying to analyze if we've changed formations. I don't think we did. Um, but for some reason, we weren't able to get pressure on their back line. And I think when that happens, then they're able to just start dumping balls in. They're able to put you on the back foot. Um, so I'm sure that we will talk about that in game management going forward. Yeah. At the end of the day, sometimes it's not tactics. It's just she believes. You're just going <laughs> to notch it down to that. Um, and so we went to a listener's happy place, a.k.a. penalties. Honestly, <laughs> the cruelest way to end the game turns a collective sport into an individual one-on-one -on -one mm. battle of nerves. And or Alyssa's case, 1v11. <laughs> I love this, <laughs> she's saying. Everyone else, everyone else is just like, oh my God, this is Russian roulette. Alyssa Nair's like, just wrapped a tie around <laughs> yeah. her head, spinning the barrel, being like, yeah, Russian roulette, babies. Yeah, she's ready. <laughs> yeah, she's been waiting for this moment all life. Lynn, you've been, well, only one of us, let's be candid, on this show has been in a shootout situation for the United States. You know, how do they work out the order of shooters? Is it kind of known or is it improvised in the moment in the huddle? No, of course, they know everything. It's not improvised at all. Um, well, we'll be practicing PKs, um, obviously, leading up into tournaments. And I, I'm i going to go ahead and assume they – well, they keep tallies of who's making it and who's missing it. Um, so I'm going to assume they have watched years and years and years of our PKs and have decided. But um, – they watch, they ask, they go off of how the people are in the moment. Um, again, I don't actually know the the inside details because I am not in the coach's office, but they see who's making their PKs and who at training can can live in that pressure because they do make it a, a pressure-filled moment and try to re reenact everything for us. Um, and so if you can control it in those moments, hopefully – the goal is that you can control it in these big, big time moments. Um, but again, besides Alyssa, I don't think anybody's wanting to go to PKs. Yeah, what does it feel like when they're like, okay, here's our five, break, and you all walk away <laughs> from the huddle? Can you put that mood into words? Is it like 11 private hells? Or you're like, <laughs> let's just have a listen there, take all five. It's actually so, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Alyssa, you're going to go one, two, three, four, five. And you're going to do the sudden death ones as well. Um, Honestly, it's so funny that you ask that. The times that we have been very successful in PKs, there's like a calm aura around the group. And the times that we haven't, it seems a little bit more chaotic. And I can't really explain it besides the fact that it's like an aura. It's it's you have so much confidence and belief in the group. Um, in you know the Olympics in 2021, when we were going up against um, – the Netherlands at the time I was on the sidelines and I, I keep, I make this joke and I say, I felt like I was going to have a brain aneurysm because you like you scream and you get this head rush and then you come back down and you're like, Oh my gosh, I have a headache. And then you scream and you get this head rush and you come and you're like, I have a headache again. But in those moments of screaming, I 
and I talked to Sam about this too. We had this calmness. I was like, we've practiced so much. I have belief in every single person who's out there. I have belief in Alyssa. I've seen her save a million PKs. She's going to be fine. And I felt that same way when we played Canada this last time, not the She Believes, but in the Gold Cup. I was, I was like, we're going to be fine. Um, she had already made, I think, two saves. And in the Tierna, water polo game. Exactly. And Tierna said, um, Tierna Davidson. Yep. And she, I think Rose was the last person to shoot it. And she said, Rose is going to, no, it wasn't Rose. Somebody was the last person to shoot it. And I listen to great. And she said, blah, blah, blah is going to, is going to win this for us. And I remember saying, nope, Alyssa is going to win this for us right now. And she stops it. So anyways, what I'm getting at is <laughs> I'm a genius. I can see the future, but no, yeah. um, <laughs> I, there's just a calmness in this aura. You're like, we've practiced this a million times. I've seen you take it a million times and know which way you're going to go. Um, I know that Alyssa is going to at least save one. And so all we have to do is, is put away ours. I love that formulation. I know Alyssa is going to save at least one. I mean, there's a, there's a psychologist we've had on the show. Um, a gentleman called uh, Gia Jourde. I think he's, mm -hmm. he's like Flemish or Dutch or something. And he spent five years studying the psychology of penalties because he believes it's the place where the human being is under the greatest crucible of pressure. He's done it not because mm. he's a football fan, which he is, but to understand how human beings act under the, the, the most insane uh, pressure. And he's worked out like, it's very interesting you say to be calm, you feel calm, because he's worked out like if the first shooter um scores and then whips up the crowd and celebrates that has just like an emboldening knock-on effect confidence wise oh, yeah. for the, i mean he's worked out the minutiae um all these things actually watch arsenal if you ever watch um, I, I believe Mikel arteta has has looked at the, the studies of gears your day because his players act in every single way that like you have to take the penalty within two and a half seconds of placing the ball down for maximal impact. Oh yeah. There's like, there's science. I'm not going to tell you all the science because I don't want the other nations to hear this and then use it. But there are, there are things that we go over that are so detailed oriented from the moment that that <laughs> final whistle blows to the moment that the game is over. Like, it is detailed. People have roles. People have responsibilities. There's positioning on the field that you want to be. There's It's everything. Yeah. By the way, too late to try and suppress the secrets. We put them all in Oppenheimer <laughs> and it won the all the Oscars. It's all out there. Um, but no. Jessie Fleming stepped up to take the first. She'd missed in Gold Cup. She was fantastic this time. Trinity Rodman, though, terrific finisher um, in her mm -hmm. natural game. But a kick. You know, I, I'd say this kick. We, we fans, Lynn have no idea the kind of crucible of pressure these players are under. And that's what that kick was, right? Yeah. I, you know, it's so funny. I've seen Trin take a million PKs and none of them have looked like that. Um, but I think that that's actually a really good moment for her. Um, I think that, like we said, we're going into the Olympics. We are pairing for an Olympics. And I think it has been proven that the last 10 major tournaments or whatever, um, there has been a penalty shootout at some moment in that tournament. And so it is more likely than not that we will face a shootout. And um, I believe that this was Trin's first PK for the United States. And I, I wish she would have scored. I think she wishes she would have scored. But I think in those moments, you're growing. You're saying, okay, I know I know what I did wrong. I know how, I know the moment. I have felt that moment before. And that's why I think you see somebody like Sophia Smith who has now put away her next two PKs. So the fact that uh, Trin is getting to experience that not in a major tournament, I think is actually really crucial and really special. So Lynn Williams, that is the that is the best part. Whatever comes next, it cannot top <laughs> what you just said. That is brilliant, oh, and thanks. it's about life. It's not just about football. But I think everyone watching can take something from from, from that moment for Trinity Rob, and I have no doubt Trinity will too. Leon then put a shot right in the same corner as Fleming. There went the same way again, but it was just outside of a grasp. Sophia Smith did not miss. She went left with a plum sent Sheridan the wrong way, and then Rose came up. And you could just tell, as she bent down uh, to position the ball, mm -hmm. uh, she was so overwhelmed by nerves. Um, and she just rolled a shot to a listener who immediately kind of picked the ball up. She didn't even save it. She just picked it up, no. um, went right to the spot. And I was just like, I don't know about you. I, mean, I was just like, oh, my God. As she went to take <laughs> the penalty, I was just like, oh, my God, a listener's in her office. 
Oh, well, the fact that I don't know what was showing on your screen, but it was a listener and an empty net. And for a second, I got really confused. I was like, what is going on? Yeah. Why is there no keeper in there? Kaylin Sheridan is like, why would I do this? Why would I even try and save it? She's automatic. Exactly. I just think it is the funniest, but the most iconic thing to see a keeper versus a keeper. Alyssa's kicking the ball with her gloves on. So stoic in the zone again in 2075. Yeah. While we're in 2024 uh, and we you just know it's going to go in. You're just like, yep. yeah, I don't know. Honestly, this might go through glitch through Sheridan. Like yeah. it's going in the net. Yeah. It was a DeLorean into the future. <laughs> yeah, I mean, exactly. by the way, um, the amazing thing about her, and you know her so well, um, she ran the ball home. You're a striker. <laughs> I mean, to me, a listener at this point from the spot mentally, she's like a Marvel comic superhero. Um, yeah. She celebrates not a bit. There's no no emotion. No. I mean, but when she grabbed the ball to take the penalty, there was no fear. When she scored the goal, there was no joy. It was just like, okay, next, Psychopath. next, okay. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Um, I know. It's crazy. She shot it and just walked right back. Honestly, of all the studies of like, this is what you need to do. You need to kick it this moment. You need to take. I don't think Alyssa does any of that. She's like, I'm going to put the ball down. And I'm going to kick it into the net. Like, why do you guys think this is so hard? Yeah. She's like, gear's your day. The guy who spent five years wasted his time. Just going to do this thing. It's not that hard. And I do love it. No emotion. Um, none when she saved the fourth. Uh, from Chloe Laclasse, she just ran out to fix the spot immediately. Save the shot. Like, and yeah. me, most goalkeepers, I mean, Emmy Martinez, I mean, just made love to himself with the world watching. <laughs> I mean, just like a listener is just like, okay, got to fix the spot. Lindsay Horan coming, doing some grass work, heavy grass work for a listener. <laughs> And then, it's just incredible. It's incredible to see Alyssa just be true to herself, no matter what the situation is going on. Serve. She just she just stays true to herself. Here to serve. <laughs> Haran converts. Rosso converts, but only to allow Sonic. This was an amazing moment lost in time. Sonic went up to take the fifth, um, and there were smiles up and down the U.S. bench. They kind of pan. They're like, "Oh, Sonny, she's going to win a seventh. She believes she's going to win it herself." Um, but Sonny, yeah. I think she's been watching Harry Kane um, <laughs> penalty kicks. It was just like, it was Harry Kane's World Cup kick. Um, it was in outer space. Um, you know what? Let's move on from this moment. Um, <laughs> spoiler alert, it ends up amazing for Emily Sonny. It was an agony, a sudden heel turn in proceedings. Suddenly the US could lose again. Lawrence converts for Canada. So did Abby Dolkemper. Can I just respect Abby Dolkemper in this tournament, Lynn Williams, stepping in when the just the powerhouse now, Naomi Gurma, mm -hmm. um, went down. And Abby Dolkemper, I just think that it will be lost in the history of She Believes because She Believes will be lost in the history ultimately. Uh, but this was really an incredible kind of cameo, more than a cameo, just a really strong, howlingly mentally strong performance by Abby Dolkemper in every oh, yeah. minute and in this moment. Yeah, I think that uh, people are quick to forget that Abby was part of that winning 2019 World Cup team and and she was the starting center back during that time. Um, and so I think as Abby has transitioned into this different role, um, her mental game and her ability to step back in and say, you know what, I know exactly what it takes to get this done um, sometimes goes unnoticed. And so I'm super proud of her. I think it also just again, uh, a moment that I think was going to help us going into the, to the Olympics of, okay, if knock on wood, if, and when somebody goes down seeing different pairs. So now we get, we got to see a pairing of Abby and Tierna, um, that we haven't seen in recent years. So, um, you know, I never see, I like to see Naomi go down. I, I love her so much. She literally can't say a bad thing about her. Um, but I, I do think that for the, if you're looking at it holistically, like this is good in the long run. I think it's amazingly well said. I mean, Naomi Goma, by the way, is not just someone going down. She's an utter powerhouse. Mm -hmm. And the fact that Abby Dolkemper, who is an incredible human being who struggled with her own injuries to come back uh, so dominantly alongside Tina 
Davidson, who also has gone through the agony of her own injury, yeah. uh, was humanly remarkable. At this point, we're just like, I'm just going to say, Nair then just went Superman from VN. So we're not even going to get into it. And we're just like, yeah. enough, Alyssa Nair, it's going to your head. Parrying yeah, it. Yeah. I, know, I think I think Sonnet wanted Alyssa to like, I think the record is like three PKs in a yeah. game. And, yeah. and Sonnet just wanted Alyssa to like get it again. So it's think, like not. Sonnet was like, I don't want this to be about me. I want this to be about Yeah, you. she's so selfless, selfless Sonnet and <laughs> conceded Nair is what I like to call yeah. them. I think that's it. She knew. <laughs> She knew I don't want the spotlight because Nair's yeah. going to go mad. So no, no, no. I'm not going to make the mistake. I'm going to blast it purposefully over the bar. Exactly. And then it was Nair, Rissa Steel, third save. Emily Fox made no mistake. Actually a great penalty there. Stunning test of nerves. But again, we have to say this. I feel like every single uh, US tournament, bar the World Cup, uh, ends with this. Now listen there. Um, no surprise, 63% of the chat voted her your player of the match. Uh, yet again, her night, three saves in the Gold Cup penalties to get home and dry. Three more tonight. Lynn Williams in the pantheon of US goalkeepers. Where does where does Alyssa Nair now exist? I mean, if we're not putting her one at this point, I don't know what she's going to have to do to, to prove it. Um, I think that in all-time PK stoppers, a uh, by far number one, but I think in big moments is, is key. And, and Alyssa is always there for the big moment. Um, so I, I she's my number one. God, uh, number one in all of our hearts. I do think <laughs> yeah. they should build a massive statue. I think she's from uh, Bridgeport, Connecticut. And I think genuinely, I think if she was from Minnesota, there'd be a huge like Paul Bunyan esque with an ax a uh, statue <laughs> of, uh, of Alyssa Nair at the town that she was born. Yeah. I think we need to do a go from me. It's time. Alyssa Nair had a gigantic Alyssa Nair statue outside of Bridgeport, Connecticut. Do it, you cowards. Um, and that was that. Can we just say, fifth straight, she believes trophy for the United States. I do want to respect Canada. I thought they were fantastic tonight. Um, I thought there were some remarkable uh, performances. Um, I really revere that team. I love their spirit. I love their energy. Um, I love their willingness to, I mean, there's a tenacity uh, that they bring onto the field that is is its own story. But Lynn, a seventh, she believes win for Emily Sonnet and a listener. I mean, I think they should be allowed to wear special shirts with loads, like a whole constellation of stars on them right now. Yeah, they should probably have special jerseys at this point. So anytime they go back to She Believes and they're wearing jerseys, they should have like a special something on their jersey. Get on it. Get on it, US Soccer. Here's the question, though. <laughs> How much does a She Believes actually matter? I mean, as a tournament win, like as a player, you've been there. Um, But let me ask you this. Do you know how many you've won? I have no idea. (laughs) Not a clue. Four, maybe. I have no, I honestly have no idea. I feel like that. Well, kind of answers Can we like call call in Hyfe? Should we call in a friend? Is that phone a friend? Do we have a <laughs> yeah. phone a friend on Do It Live? Two thousand Hyfe is the the PR gentleman extraordinaire. He's the listener of of comms on the U.S. Women's National Team side. Two thousand eighteen, I think. Two thousand twenty, two thousand twenty one, two thousand twenty. I think you've I think you've played in five, um, and one. Did you um, that? Uh, did I go? No, I just, I'm just your biographer, <laughs> your humble, your humble biographer. Uh, but I want to no. know what is, what, um, I, I, it I, matters. I, it matters. I, I think that to your point of like, how do I not know? Does it matter? I would like, I don't know how many goals I have or caps I have either, but those all I matter do. in, my, oh, go on. I've got to Google it. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I don't know those stats either, but they matter to me. Um, I think any tournament matters. Any game on the U.S. team matters. Any practice matters. There's just, especially in this nation, there is so much competition. There's so much hype. There's so much, so muchness um, that <laughs> that everything matters. And and when you are at the top of the rankings, obviously in recent years and recent times, there's been some movement at the top there, but. When you are at the top, people want to see you fall, first of all. Like people yes. love to build up yes. teams and then want to see them fall. True. Um, and we we have a standard and a a want for ourselves that is so high, that is higher than anybody can put on us, that that every moment matters. And so when you're trying to make a, an Olympic team and a World Cup team and a 
all the teams, that doesn't start now in April for a July tournament. That started 10 years ago when they were scouting us in college. Are they scouting us now that kids aren't going to college anymore? When they're scouting people in high school. Um, and so every single moment of that learning and experience and um, getting to to see things and, and partnerships of people and the ins and outs. And again, I do not envy coaches because they're not sleeping because they're having to look at all this stuff, but it, it matters. Every moment matters. God, I mean, God bless. And by the way, 63 caps and 18 goals. I didn't know exactly how many I did. I was joking about the Google thing. <laughs> um, I mean, how, do you know that I have a lot of people? D no, only about you, oh. Becky and, uh, and, and Sam Mewis. Good. I know every okay. single detail of anyone um that i work with but the, 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 the ultimately there's a question of prize money and I, mm -hmm. I have done a lot of googling and i can't quite work out what the, the prize money is for the uh for the she believes but i do think what's important ultimately is the olympics sam was pretty clear uh when we we, we chatted post the uh, uh the win of the weekend 108 days away now um Ooh. who caught your eye tonight in terms of the the game it was sophia smith's night obviously it was a listener's night there was a game of football it's always a listener's <laughs> night like well, in in terms of who's sitting there in the locker room tonight being like that was a great game of wonder yeah i think um easy pick but i think Jaden played a great game i think that um her ability to play that inverted winger but also the 10 um and to occupy the pocket um has been really great for us. I also think the defensive side of the game, um, I think she's grown a lot in that part of her game. Um, and it's really cool to see, um, you know, I, I think Abby and Tierna, that partnership, I thought it, it was really great. Um, Abby's ability to ping the ball like over distance and like on a dime. Um, it's something that I have admired about her game for a really long time and to see it again has been incredible. Um, so I, and I, I think Sonnet coming in and out, I think that like, if you look at Sonnet, I, I think one, it's unfortunate that she misses the PK. Cause I think that people will, um, remember that. But if you looked at the game, I think that her ability to come in when needed, always calm the game down, keep possession, start our attack. Um, and then also like disrupt play when needed. I thought she played an amazing game. Yeah, can I just also say Emily Fox? Um, Emily is Fox is almost moving to like a, a, in the NFL, like a cornerback you do not throw to. Like people do not want to attack. She just exists on an island. Mm -hmm. um, is remarkable to watch her. Abby Dolkemper, uh, I shot with her once in uh, in her hometown uh, outside of San Francisco. Um, we played crossbar challenge. And you talk about a pinging balls. I mean, I've never played crossbar challenge with someone who is more serious <laughs> and actually more bloody good. And it really annoyed me. Um, <laughs> I, I was saying my takeaway, the US team is starting to realize it's got its tenacity back, that ferocious mm -hmm. bounce back ability. Lovely news. Next time the United States play, Emma Hayes will be the manager, which is, um, which is a remarkable moment um, for this team. Really a turning point. Uh, a vendor punk, uh, as we say at Men in Blazers. Uh, we are going to jump to your questions. I've loved listening to you break this game down, Lynn Williams, you remarkable human being. We do need to mention the other game, Brazil fought back in the second half to take third place in the tournament via penalties. Uh, Japan scored first, couldn't hold on. Uh, Brazilian goalkeeper Lorena saved three straight penalty kicks like a South American, a listener. Um I do want to also congratulate the Super Falcons of Nigeria who qualified for the 2024 Olympics today after a 16-year absence. They beat Incredible. South Africa. Um, they will uh, coach Randy Waldrum. Did you ever come across him? He's the Pittsburgh. I did. How do you know Randy? He was my 23s coach for <laughs> a couple of camps, and then he um, coached in Houston. Yeah, that's right. I don't yep. know him. I've never met him. I've never <laughs> talked to him. I just love this story. Um <laughs> I mean, he, he kind of like side quests with Nigeria. They are going to side quest in the Olympics. There will be a team no one wants to meet. Uh, Nigeria forward, Michelle Alozi, actually Sam's guest on Friendlies this week. I know. Oh, she's amazing. I know. Sam or well, Sam. Alozi? Both. Obviously, yes. <laughs> I mean, 
By the way, I mean, Sam is, I mean, they're both, they're both, I mean, they're both able to do many, many things. In, in the Lucy's um, POV, she, she's just your full-time footballer and part-time cancer researcher, Lynn. Yeah. Honestly, she needs to do more with her time. Like she's, I know. I know. <laughs> she's not I, doing it right. Enough. I mean, honestly, the devil makes whatever that phrase is for idle hands. Yes. I don't remember what it is. I don't um, even know why you started this thing. <laughs> I don't know. As someone that like, can't do anything <laughs> for me to be laughing. I mean, if you've not listened to this interview, do even Apple Podcasts, give it a listen, subscribe to uh, the Women's Game on its very own feed, um, and just support all of the work that Sam uh, and Lynn and Becky Sauerbrunn are, are piecing together with wonder. Um, also tonight, US Olympic group is now complete. Congrats to the Copper Queens of Zambia. Advanced the Olympics to join the US, Germany and Australia in Group B. They defeated Morocco in extra time. God bless Barbara Banda of the Orlando Pride. He'll now be amongst their remarkable crew at the Olympics. But Lynn, it's time. Are you ready for the callers? I've been ready. This is my favorite part. I've You've never done ready. this before, but this is my favorite part. This is it. Let's do this. Let's... <laughs> By the way, it's not that hard a choice. Talking to me there, talking <laughs> no. to random strangers there. And by the way, I agree. Come be with us. A reminder of how you can, dear listeners, get involved. Come be with us. Scan the QR code. I hate them, but do it. Come be with us. It's in the left of your screen. Or click the pinned comment in the chat. Take you into a Zoom with our producer, J-Dubs, who's a beautiful human being. He'll tell you everything you need to know to come on. Don't worry, you won't appear on screen, so you don't have to put a shirt on. And for those of you who don't want to ask a question, do us a huge favor. Give us a like. It helps more than you will know. Um, we're going to go first with the mighty Netta. Netta, come on up. Speak to Lynn. Tell us where you are and what's your question. Hi, guys. Um, I'm coming to you from New Hampshire. My dog and I are sitting, listening to your beautiful voices, analyze the game. What's your dog's name? Um, my dog's name is Juno. She's a golden doodle. Oh, hello, Juno. <laughs> Um, I, I think that she and Finn would get along really well because they're both doodles, but I guess we'll never know. Um, maybe. Never, never say maybe. never. <laughs> yeah. Um, my question is about, um, for Lynn mainly, how the team maintains their um, identity and chemistry and mentality, especially right now at a time where so many players are coming in and out of camp, given injuries like ones that you're dealing with right now, as well as a big looming cut to the roster that's coming with the Olympics. Yeah, the looming cut. Um, I think that it's it's kind of part, it's just built in part of the game. Um, you know, you go with your club team and then you are getting called into these camps. So I think that that has something to say, like you have practice in that of you, you're already like balancing two different minds and two different teams all the time. Um, and so your ability to like, compartmentalize and say like, okay, this is for that moment. And now I have to move on and shift my mindset. Um, I think that that's the beauty of the U S is, and also what's so difficult about making the team is how much talent there is in the United States. And so you just know that you have to bring your best every moment of every day. Um, not just in training, but that's in like watching film and connecting with, um, your teammates outside of the field. I think that you have to put a lot of effort and, and, and wanting to get to know people, like what makes people tick? Like what, why are you the way that you are? And so when you're on the field and you look at somebody um, and you've had that off the field connection, then you can maybe, maybe it's a moment that's like a little heated and you don't say something that's so perfect. You know that off the field, it's like, okay, she's going to take this fine anyways, because we, I've gotten to know her off the field, if that makes any sense. So, um, and then just having like a mutual respect, I think um, the willingness to, to listen, um, and understand what your fellow teammate wants on the field um, and working through that and willingness to say like, okay, well, this is what I saw on the field, but maybe you saw something different and you actually are behind me so you can see more of the field from me and I have to trust you and vice versa. So I think that that's at least how I do it. Does that answer your question, Netta? It was awesome. Thank you so much. 
It was well, awesome. thank you. Netta, you're awesome. Come be with us anytime. Next up, it's the mighty Hannah. Tell us where you are and what's your question. Okay, so um, <laughs> Hannah has unfortunately had to take a 9 p.m. work call. So boo oh. that. So oh. you are contending with Sarah. Sarah. Um, and <laughs> Sarah, and welcome I'm in by Hannah, 9 p.m. Can you, can you patch us into Hannah's work call? Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> um, what job what does Hannah do? What job does Hannah do? Um, we are both engineers. Oh, I, okay. You know what? Respect. Suddenly, respect <laughs> Hannah. Okay. Suddenly, we are yeah. taking all of that back. <laughs> yes, we are. We Hannah, take the call. Focus on the call. Uh, tell us where you are, both. So and... we uh, both live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Shout out Milwaukee. Yes. Woo-hoo. Sorry, did we um, get your name? Sarah. I'm Sarah. Sarah. Sorry, sorry. I was so focused on yes. Hannah's work. Yes. Sarah, can Sarah. I ask you a question? Do you know Hannah or did she just shove a phone in your hand as you were walking past? And <laughs> I, said, I do know randos? Hannah. I do know Hannah. We watch all the games we can together. So tonight was sushi oh and boba and the national team game. Yum. And the cats in his national team jersey <laughs> were having a great time. Who's on the back of the cats national team jersey? Unfortunately, we could not find a Lynn Williams cat sized jersey. So oh, it is just Nike. What are you even USA doing? You need to, you need to do. Can I just tell you? You know how um, the England goalkeeper um, just went mad with Nike because they didn't release a goalkeeper jersey? This is yeah. your moment, yeah. Lynn, where you just I, I Nike want for animal, Nike. animal Lynn Williams jerseys. And if not, we're rioting. <laughs> Not human Listen, there's animals. There's two cats here. You you release it. We'll buy we'll buy three. <laughs> they have a backup. Yeah. By the way, this is rational. Talking about rioting if there's no cat jerseys, rational, rational. And I'm with <laughs> exactly. you. We were, the, the women's game will not have matured to the level we need it. And this is cat jerseys with exactly. Lynn on the back. <laughs> but Sarah, by the way, number one, thank you for stepping in uh, in the Abbey Doll Kemper to the Naomi Gurma Rail to Hannah for the engineering call. But well, tell us what your question is. Okay, so before I give my question, I just want to quickly say Friendlies and Good Vibes FC is like the highlight of my week every week. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to do this. I really appreciate it. I love what you guys do. So my question is, it's a would you rather question. Would you rather have the game run through quickly like tonight with no VAR and some missed or wrong calls like that penalty or have VAR and have those like six minute stoppages and like 15, 20 minutes of extra time at the end. You can't say somewhere in between. You have to pick one. Raj, you go first. Oh, Lynn, no one wants to hear my answer. Go first. To this. Because, you know, between the two of us, um, only one of us actually plays games. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll give you some time to think about it by reading a question from the chat, which uh, a comment from the chat. Blue Calyx has come with a very deep old historic American soccer joke. Chuck Blazer, that was the um, guy from US soccer, CONCACAF, who had the apartment for cats. Uh, Chuck Blazer has all the US women's national team cat jerseys in his cat apartment. Blue uh, Calyx, can you do me a favor? Can you email us at meninblazer at gmail.com? That made me laugh. I needed to laugh. I'm going to send you a women's game patch uh, for that. The world needs more laughter. Also, I believe Sarah, you or Hannah, has sent a a picture of of your cat, which we're going to post to our social for real so we can all see the cat what's the amazing cat's name? tell us the name of the cat his name is drogon and and uh hannah has actually just come out of her meeting say hello hello hannah yeah. welcome hannah, <laughs> hannah why are they dragging you into work at nine o'clock in the evening you're asking such good questions <laughs> hannah i also got dragged into work at 9 8 9 p.m i'm just kidding you get it you get it <laughs> um okay back to your question we've stalled long enough honestly I, I'm going to say no VAR. I'm going to say no VAR. You're going there. Ooh, why why okay. is that? T- tell us why. Because, because I still think that when you're doing VAR, there is human error. And so why, if, if I have the, tr- if it's one or the other, either one's going to have human error and one's just going to prolong the game for a really long time. 
versus the other one of, for example, offsides. VAR is like drawing a teeny tiny little line versus like the human of it was my run an advantage or not and that either one can be does that make sense that's my reasoning we're all flawed we are all flawed who amongst us is not a flawed human being and the answer is drogan the cat it is so <laughs> lovely to be with you both you've given us so much joy tonight i am so incredibly grateful and whatever work you were doing on the engineering tip uh america thanks to you we're all better off for all of you engineers doing incredible work very we're going to speed through the rest of there's a load of them and i want to honor everyone that's been waiting you've been amazing lisa come on up tell us where you are and what's your question hi guys um i am calling from seattle washington home of the rain where you oh, know austin likes to steal all their players from um <laughs> i actually cut her line cut her line <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to say, um, before I ask my question, Lynn, you are hands down my favorite player on the national team. Yeah, I you. love your no nonsense play. I remember watching a short before the World Cup and they were asking everybody like their essential pack items and everybody else was like, my skincare, <laughs> my headphones. And you were just like, my cleats. <laughs> like you're just there to do the job and to do business. And I just love it like comes across in your play and I just love watching you play. So thank you. Sad you're out right now. Can't wait for you to be back. Thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate that. Lisa, can yeah. I just ask you a quick question? We're just focus grouping yeah. this. If there was a Lynn yeah. Williams cat jersey, would you or would you <laughs> not buy it? Ooh, we're kind of a dog household over here. So dog jersey? Go for a dog size. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We did say animal. Yeah. If do, you have a horse, a hedgehog, a bird, <laughs> we want all the Lynn Williams jerseys. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. If they came out with a hedgehog Lynn Williams jersey, I might have to go get a hedgehog tomorrow. Imagine has all these holes in it. Um, sorry. I need to focus. We got to focus. <laughs> no, we got to focus. Um, okay. So my question is about your perspective, Lynn, on the end game. I know we talked about this a little bit after – the last game, just kind of going to that defensive block, it seemed like they tried something a little different this game, but it still kind of seemed like it took the momentum away from the U.S. And just kind of wondering your perspective on like being on the field, what it's like to make that transition and kind of how what you think they're trying to do and how you think it's working or what they could kind of shift to seal the deal. Yeah, I think it's a very interesting and a unique balance. Um First of all, usually when it's the end of the game and somebody is going for a goal, it's nonsense out there. It's crazy. Like they are putting people on your back line and, and you need to be a number up. So you have to somehow get into a defensive shape that is protective of your goal while also getting pressure on the ball so it doesn't get to the goal, if that makes sense. Because the most important thing on the field is the ball. And so... How, how do we obviously keep that out of our net? So I think that um, it's it's interesting. Like like I said, when people are on your back line, you have to have a number up. But maybe if we can shift into a formation that allows us to continue to push forward, I think that there is a difference in being conservative. Um, and then there's a difference of like being too on the front foot. You don't want to be like high pressing and then they are – you're like Swiss cheese for lack of better words. Um, so when we do get into that lower block shape, how do we go from that shape out into a press? Again, I'm not the coach. I don't know. I wasn't there, but I think that um, that is something that they probably will go over. We'll go over and say like, okay, we did do X, Y, and Z good of getting into the shape, denying crosses X, Y, and Z. But like, how do we then go from that block and like push ourselves out so they don't, get to cross it or even lump it in i don't know if that answers your question at all i'd like you to be the i'd like you to be the coach of everton i've heard enough lynn williams lisa <laughs> i am gonna make sure i will buy you a hedgehog if those hedgehog lynn williams jerseys ever come out you are a remarkable human being i'll buy you another keep... one too one that we'll get, two hedgehogs. We'll you multiple hedgehogs <laughs> this is amazing uh, i do want to honor everyone that's come up we're going to get to megan J. O'Brien. Tell us where you are, Megan J. O'Brien, and what's your question? Can 
You got to unmute Megan J. O'Brien. <laughs> I think Megan J. O'Brien may have run out and brought a hedgehog impulsively. Yeah. We will get back to you if you are there. <laughs> but Bethany, if you're there, tell us oh, where you are and what's your question. Hello, I am here. Um, I am calling in from Detroit, Michigan. Oh, Detroit. What a city. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. So obviously, first off, um, Lynn, I'm sending you good healing vibes and I hope to see you on the field soon. Um, I was wondering what your thoughts on Corbin Albert playing this tournament um, and do you think she'll be on the Olympic roster and it will be affected from um, the statements made by her and in, in the whole situation? Yeah, um, you know, I, I can't say what, again, I know they put out a statement saying that there was internal um, dialogue. I, again, I wasn't in this camp, so I don't know what was spoken in those meetings. I also don't, I'm not in the meetings with her and the coaches. Um I'm hoping that people listen to um, the Good Vibes FC podcast. Um, I kind of shared my sentiments there. They obviously haven't changed personally um, my feelings towards the issue. Um, and then I know there was a statement with that the PA put out. Um, so I think that that um, is a situation that is above me um, and how they are handling that. Um, but again, like I said, I have voiced my opinion on the matter with the good vibes FC podcast. So, um, so that's kind of all I really have to say about that matter. Like, I, I mean, it's worth reading out the PA, um, the PA statement, which was, I mean, it was dropped right before the game. Um, I'm just currently scrolling. If you're listening to this through the, uh, through the old, uh, through the old Twitter, U.S. Women's National Team players have long believed one of our primary responsibilities is advocacy for ourselves, our teammates, our sibling teams, our fans, and society at large. Our ability to be advocates is one of the great privileges representing this national team uh, affords us. By the way, whenever I read a U.S. Women's National Team players' statement, I always hear it in Becky Sauerbrunn's voice. <laughs> the, the women's soccer community is one of joy, excitement, kindness, and love. It's such a spectacular sentence. I'm going to read it again. Women's soccer community, one of joy, excitement, kindness, and love. We've worked to ensure our community is safe, inclusive, and welcoming. Also, it's critical, safe, inclusive, and welcoming to everyone as allies and members of the LBG. LGBTQIA plus community. Those efforts will not stop. Across the country, human rights are being stripped away. LGBTQIA plus rights are human rights. Trans rights are human rights today and every day. The US Women's National Team players will stand up for those rights. So that statement was put out today ahead of the game. I mean, it's a very powerful statement. It's a very powerful symbol. Um, mm -hmm. It's a very powerful moment. Um, we have no idea to answer your question who will be in the 18. Like no uh, concept, it's, it's a decision that's going to be made, uh, not by anybody on this do it live. Um, what I can say, you know, I've thought a lot about it, um, as I'm sure everybody here has, who's 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 come together tonight to discuss this game. Um, and I do. I mean, ultimately, we can put out statements. Corbyn can put out statements. Ultimately, uh, she's a young human being. Um, and, and more than put out statements, the journey that she now goes on, the sense of it. All of us have made mistakes in our past. Like how you react to these mistakes defines you in life, whether you truly change, whether you truly open your mind, whether you're truly curious, whether you're truly uh, sent off on a new uh, sense of understanding. So this is the moment we stand at. I thought the statement was beautiful by the U.S. Women's National Team Players Association. Um and it's something, I mean, you heard tonight, you heard the fans booing when she came on. It's a long road. Um, and ultimately, the ball is in U.S. soccer's court, and it's in uh, in her court as a human being. Um, and we, all we've got to be is ultimately um, open-minded uh, in return and hope that there's an open-mindedness that is played back in. Um, last question of the night. It's the mighty alliteration. It's Molly Macau. Molly, tell us where you are. What's your question? Hey, guys. Um, uh, I am in Baltimore, and I'm from Philadelphia. I'm dying for Philly to get an NWSL team. 
Um, just putting that, just manifesting that. Yeah. <laughs> Sprinkle that into the universe. <laughs> yeah. We'd be such good fans. Um, <laughs> we're so, we're so, we're so intense. So respectful. Um, so I, you would move back. I feel. Yeah. I'll work on it. Okay. Um, <laughs> So I like love women's sports and I like love equality. And so I followed this team for years and years because it seems like at the forefront um, with the women's game podcast, I'm trying to learn more technical like aspects of the games. Like, I don't know, there's midfielders or forwards. Um, so my technical question for you guys is that because we're earlier in the like NWSL season that there's more subs than there maybe was in the World Cup, or is that more of coaching preferences? Oh, is that is that a feeling or is that a stat? Oh, it's a feeling from me. So I, I but it seems like there's more subs for the Are, US team like today. Um do, do, do I, you mean do you mean Vlatko didn't make any substitutes and now they do make <laughs> substitutes? Is that what you I just remember Christian Yu is like didn't touch the ball until a PK and that stressed me out. I think this has to do with I think when you are leading up to a major tournament, you're going to see more subs because you're going to see them trying out different systems, different personnel with who's going to go with who, different pairings, what subgroup. So for If people don't know what a subgroup is, it's like you can have your forwards, your midfield, your defense could be three different subgroups or your the right side of the pitch versus the left side of the pitch are different subgroups as well. Um, and I think that when you're leading into tournaments, you're going to see um, more rotations happening because they're trying to um, experiment with a variety of different things. As you get into tournaments, um, you normally just see less subs, especially um, later on into the tournament, the further you go. Um, and they're going to be more specific subs in what that specific game needs for and what person can do X, Y, and Z for that game. Um, and what, um, like position you are, like if you're winning, if you're losing, what scenario is going on? So I don't know. I don't think it's necessarily that we're early in the season. I just think it's the situations that it, that's at hand. Oh, what a beautiful question. An incredible moment to, uh, end, this night, I do love um, the notion, um, Lynn, that you actually are explaining uh, to your partner that you're on a work call like Hannah was on a work <laughs> call. I'm just doing some engineering. Is that what you said? Yeah, I just got to go engineer a little bit. Yeah, just a go little... engineer a little bit. <laughs> Work's pulling me in. Let me do a work call. He's like, what are you yeah. doing? I thought you played <laughs> soccer. <laughs> I just saved the world. That's yeah. what it's, you know. I just also, got hedgehogs wearing my jerseys. I know, that's how big I am now. That's how big <laughs> I am. Even bloody hedgehogs are wearing my jerseys across this nation. Um, I mean, ultimately, when I'm, I'm joking about saving the world, a listener is the human being. If you only take one thing from this show, a listener for president. I want to thank all of our callers, the spirit, the energy, the joy, the wonder, sense of discovery. I want to thank everybody in the chat, which has just been hilarious tonight. Um, I want to thank, um, Lynn, I like to think of this as the inaugural episode of Nax. How did you think it went? I think Nax was good. We should <laughs> like get, get our own, um, what not label, Let's get a label, for lack of better words, get a, a Nax label. Well, you think we need our own freeze? Yeah. I'm having a KO time. It would be like yeah. a complete knockoff of somebody else's. <laughs> Sam would be get jealous. Um, we can have the... like lemons as our things. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it's just, I mean, it's, it's fitting. But the nice <laughs> news is Sam does not have to be jealous because she is... Oh, just the godhead that rises above us and the nice news for everyone yeah. she'll be back thursday thankfully without me um but most wonderfully um with the people's captain becky sauerbrun on a new episode of good vibes fc to break down this game in a deeper way once a smoke uh has cleared and the and the she believes cup the or as i believe i'd like it to be called the sophia smith believes cup uh as a whole make sure you subscribe to the women's game feed wherever you get your podcast i just want to say lynn can I say what a human wonder you are? It's been a true joy. You have yeah. It's been a long day. I woke up this morning in Cincinnati, um, uh, Rose Lavelle's mighty city. I'm now back in New York. Um, 
you have lifted my spirits. I think you've lifted the spirits of everyone who's on this thing. You're a human wonder. I'm incredibly grateful. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for being a cross-country traveler, making it to your engineering meeting. 100% committed to Nax. <laughs> Courage, <laughs> go, go, USA, <laughs> Nax. What do we do at the end of Nax? What is it? Do we have, what's, what's a knockoff comp? Oh, it's just kind of like a, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nax. Uh. <laughs>